I guarantee all five of these things are going to improve your guitar learning journey and your guitar playing, really no matter what level you're at. Hey everybody, I am Johnny Stewart and welcome to John's Guitar Lounge. Now I have not done a traditional lesson video in quite a while and that's because I've got so much content still even from the 2024 NOM show back in January that I just keep posting a bunch of that stuff. But today I'm going to do a traditional lesson and I'm going to tell you and show you my five craziest, really the craziest guitar tips that have helped me over the years that actually are going to improve your playing. There are very few things I can guarantee in this world, but I guarantee all five of these things are going to improve your guitar learning journey and your guitar playing, really no matter what level you're at. Now for this lesson, I'm going to use this gorgeous Minerick guitar. It's a Minerick Flying Dutchman. The Flying Dutchman, if you don't know, just Google it. It's an old ship that did not do so well. It's probably the most famous ghost ship um, in all of uh, folklore. Now I'm going to talk about this guitar a lot more later in this video, so watch all the way to the end so you can see all about this cool guitar. And I'm going to do basically a whole demo of this guitar throughout the video and then talk about some of the really special stuff. Subscribe to my channel so you can see more than 60 free guitar lessons. I have more than 60 free guitar lessons on my channel. And I've got a lot more of amazing interviews with awesome, awesome guitar players and musicians coming up. So my first crazy guitar tip that actually is going to make you play better is you have to understand you have to make mistakes. Everybody in Western culture thinks, oh, you make a mistake that's bad. People make fun of you in school for it when you're a kid. You make a mistake, you give the wrong answer in class. Oh, you must be stupid. Oh. How could I do that? And that is probably the most frustrating thing that all of my new students tell me they're having trouble with. They make a mistake and they get discouraged. Contrast that with the educational system in the East, like in the Asian countries. There, people are not chastised and made fun of for making mistakes. They are used as learning experiences and it's the same thing on the guitar. We all make mistakes. Don't get discouraged. There's no reason to be discouraged. Just Stick with it, and trust me, whether it takes five minutes, or an hour, or a few days, you're going to be able to play what you're trying to play. The reason why professional guitar players are professional guitar players and sound perfect on stage every time they play a lick, or a riff, or a solo is because they have spent countless hours making mistakes, trial and error, and they found the best way to do it, and then they've played it that way over and over and over again. Now, if you're finding this video useful, then please hit the like button because that tells YouTube to push it out to more people so they can learn from it too. Now, my crazy guitar tip number two is you have to practice faster than you want to when you're playing the actual song. So what I mean by that is, let's say you've got a tempo of about like this and you want to play something like that nice bluesy sort of lick. Now, when you start to play that, it's going to take a while to learn. You're going to have to learn every note and where it is on the fretboard again. If you make a mistake like that, like tip number one, don't get upset. Just learn it where it's supposed to go and learn the fingering and go as slow as you need. But then as you build up speed and as you build up muscle memory in your fingers and your fingers remember where to go for that lick and your mind remembers where to go and it gets easier, then let's say the tempo of the song is like this. You're going to be playing it in the actual song like this. But to practice it, just to make sure that you can lock that in and play it every single time you want to, just like that, when you're playing the actual tempo, you want to go faster. See? And you mess it up, and it's okay. Try it again. Once you get it faster, and can play it like it's nobody's business faster, then you'll see when you're playing the actual thing during the song, it's going to be a piece of cake. Now, I also want to give a huge shout out to my buddy Darnell Cole. He's starting his European tour in just a few days. So if you live in Europe, check out all the places on his website, which I'll link in the description to this video, so you can check him out live, and it is going to be an experience for you. But he is an amazing guy. I've got a really cool interview with him from a few months ago on my channel, which I will link right either here or here. I think it's over here. So check out that link. So now for crazy guitar tip number three. And this one is going to blow a lot of your minds, I think. This one is that scales can be your enemy. 
Now you're going to say, what? Everybody teaches scales. Everybody says you have to learn this scale. You have to learn the major scale. You have to learn how to play that. That's okay. That's great. You have to learn the pentatonic scale. And you have to learn it all over the neck and all this stuff, so that way you can really play guitar and all these other scales. Now, scales can be great, and it's important to know the notes of the scales, I guess, but people get tired of playing scales. Whenever you're just trying to play whatever it is and you're... Oh, it gets so tired and boring and people that's one of the things that makes people want to quit guitars that stuff is boring and they're learning stuff that they don't like when have you heard someone playing a guitar solo like in a famous song and they go that doesn't sound like something jimmy page would really get famous for does it what you can do is you can play intervals and playing intervals is going to teach you how to do a bunch of different stuff all at once you will still learn the notes of the scale so let's say you just want to focus on the major scale for now in the key of e just to keep it easy and that's the major scale on the first three strings the lowest three strings just to save you the monotony but then if you want to do something more than just that boring thing all the time and maybe play it's like something that sounds fun or learn how the different strings work together and all that you can do intervals and what i mean by intervals are instead of just you know one whole step and then another whole step and then a half step what you can do is you can do let's try third we're gonna go up here to the fourth fret on the low e string and now that's a third what they call a third and a third is two whole steps up and we're just gonna go exercise and that shows you how the different strings and the different notes are related to each other so I will go into much more detail on this and I will show you some great examples in a future video but I just want to lay the foundation now just for now if you want to start to learn how to do this just play around with it and try different things and in next week's lesson video I'm gonna show you more of this stuff and I'll show you how to go all the way up the neck with it and I will show you how to go back down the neck with it too so you can do it in both directions now my crazy guitar tip number four is that the same patterns and fingerings work all up and down the neck. Now what does that mean? That means that for everything except for open chords, and what I mean by open chords are the chords down here in what a lot of people call first position, where you're playing a bunch of open strings and all that stuff, because those open strings aren't going to change unless you fret them. So this works for everything else. For bar chords, and if you're not good at playing bar chords yet, you can watch all my bar chord videos, which I'm going to put a link to right here. I think it's going to be on this side, so you can watch that right there. And I will also, or it might be right Right there and I will also put a link to that right in the video description here so you can see it and learn how to play bar chords much much easier than you might already know how so what I mean by moving the position is this when you take your index finger and you bar all the way across a fret say in this case the fifth fret now your low E string you'll be playing an A and you'll be playing an A on your high E string as well and so you're basically taking this nut and you're doing that with all six strings and you're barring all six strings so now what would be totally open like that is now as if you're taking the nut and moving it up here or if you're taking a capo and check out my capo video for some really cool ways to play with capos that you might not have thought of but either way you take your finger just like this now you're moving that nut right up so now everything you do up here like this E chord shape down here now if you want to play a G you can play it here at the third fret if you want to play a G sharp or a flat that's at the fourth fret and a is at the fifth fret a sharp or B flat is at the sixth fret B is at the seventh fret and it goes right up the whole neck that way so whatever you want to play whatever chord you want to play you can do it just using one chord shape all up and down the whole neck so now watch me play like a whole rock and roll chord progression like one four five just using this one chord shape up and down the neck
you can play just that one chord shape. So if you learn just one bar chord, you can play so many songs. The same principle applies not just to chords, but also to riffs and licks. So let's say you've learned a riff in the key of A, like that one I showed you earlier in this video, like that that sort of bluesy-ish sort of riff. And I hope I play the same thing that I played before, but just to show you. So let's say we want to do that. And that's in the key of A. But now let's say you're jamming with people or playing with people and they're in the key of G. Or you're learning a song that fits your voice best in the key of G. What do you do? How am I going to play that? All you have to do is, if you were going to play it up here, you know that an A is one whole step higher than a G. So now you just take that whole lick and move it back two frets, move it down toward the nut, toward the headstock by two frets. And now instead of starting on the eighth fret, you're gonna start on the sixth fret. And now listen. Same lick, right? Now do it back in A again. Now what if you're playing in C? Same thing, just go up from A, go up three frets, or from the G, go up five frets. And now we're in the key of C. C, that's a C. Wow, and tone-wise, actually, the way it's voiced, I actually like that best of all. I might have to start playing some more stuff in C. But either way... And doesn't that make it easier to play and easier to conceptualize the fretboard? Wherever you are on the fretboard, you can play the same stuff as long as you know how many steps above the fret that you learned something in you're going to need to be to be in that particular key. Now, my crazy guitar tip number five. And this is probably the craziest one of all. Anyone and everyone can play the guitar. Some people make progress more quickly than others, and that's okay. Some people have physical attributes about themselves that make it so that they need to learn different ways to play the guitar without all four fingers working. If you have arthritis, if you're missing fingers, frankly. If, if you are missing a hand, trust me, there are very talented people who I've seen play the guitar through the years who actually play with only one hand. How do you do that? I will show you in another video some of that stuff, but just as a quick thing, all you really need is one hand if you set your gain on your guitar high enough, and you can still make sound come out. See? I'm doing all this with just one hand, and I don't even have the gain set that high. Now you'll see a lot of famous guitar players do this on stage sometimes, like when they want to show off and be like, oh my god, how's he doing that? How is he able to do that with just one hand? It's actually a lot easier than you think. If I can do it, trust me, you can do it too. Not everybody is going to be able to play like Steve Vai or Stevie Ray Vaughan or Stevie Nicks or think of some more Steves or whoever you want to play like. Sometimes we just have to realize how best we play and we need to adapt to that. I can't play like Steve Vai, but you know what? I love playing and I can play the way that I want to and you will be able to play the way that you want to as well if you put in the time and put in the effort and don't get distracted and discouraged by all the people around you who are learning to play too. I have more than 60 free guitar lessons on my channel, so subscribe so you can see all those. Alright, so now I want to show you more of this gorgeous, gorgeous Minaric guitar. Now this is loosely, very loosely, as you can see, modeled after something like a Gibson 335 or something like that, like an ES-335. It is a semi-hollow body guitar. It's got these gorgeous, you know, I can't call them F-holes really because they don't look like Fs, but Minaric really does amazing stuff. And I've known Mark since about 2013. I met him back then when my uncle bought a couple of his guitars at the NAMM show way back in 2013. When I was much younger and looked much better. Well, I can't say much better, <laughs> but <laughs> at least I was younger. And so Mark Minaric is an amazing, amazing guy. His company was pretty new back then, and he was a fairly new luthier to the game back then. And I'm so fortunate to have stayed connected with Mark, and I got to see him this past January at the NAMM show in Anaheim, California, and I've got a whole video with him talking about all these cool guitars, including this, plus a lot of other cool stuff. If you're not into hollow bodies or semi-hollow bodies, he's got amazing, amazing stuff. Lemmy, who? You better know who Lemmy is. Lemmy was one of his biggest proponents. 
and used all of his stuff, all of his bases. And trust me, this guy knows how to build amazing guitars and design guitars. And if you can't tell from this thing and just how it looks, trust me, this is not all looks. This is a piece of art that should hang on a wall in a museum. But guess what? It is functional art. And you might have heard me talk about this before if you've seen some of my other videos. Functional art. You can have something that's beautiful to the eye, but also that functions and works pretty much, you know, just as good as, if not better than anything else that you can buy. And there are things about this design that affect the tone. So that's part of why it functions so well, which I'm going to talk about in just a second. That is what I mean by functional art, and that is what makes Minaret guitars so special. Now, he is not giving me anything for this. I want to make that clear. I bought this. He's not giving me anything for this. So this is a completely unaffected and uninfluenced review of this guitar. And check out my video, which I'm going to link right here. Again, I don't know whether it's going to be over here, over here, probably over here. So click on that when you want to see it. But you don't have to click on it now because I want you to see this one right now. I'm going to put the link for that video and for Mark's website right in the description to this video so you can get there easy and watch it. So with all that said, here we go. Now, why does it have this tail? Is it supposed to look like it's sort of demonic, like a devil, with these horns up here? Not like a regular, like, ES-335 sort of horns, like where they're, like, art and curved and beautiful and all that. This is a mean-looking machine. And trust me, it does some mean stuff. But it doesn't just do mean stuff. It also dials in some really, like, beautiful, mellow, jazzy tones and all that. So if you want to play jazz on this and really freak out the establishment <laughs> and whatever you want to do, this guitar really can do it all. We've obviously got this gorgeous inlay in the headstock and all down the neck, this tree of life, this vine tree of life type of inlay. Now notice this though, this is not like most tree of life inlays, which are normally just flowery and beautiful and whatever else. This is beautiful, but this is also functional. Pay attention to how functional this is. You've got your first fret, right? And there's this little guy in the center here, right? That's fret number one. Then look, where's the next one of those? Fret number three, then fret number five, then fret number seven, just like on a regular guitar. So it helps, especially when you're learning to play guitar and learning the fretboard, this helps to show you, hey, that's the fifth fret. Hey, that's the seventh fret. It's set up like a normal guitar, but with all these cool stylistic things to make it look gorgeous, but with these almost hidden, but not really hidden, once you notice them, you know, very useful details. So there's the seventh fret, there's the ninth fret, and look, now the twelfth fret, the twelfth fret normally has two dot markers like on a Fender Stratocaster or Telecaster, and look, one, two. So that's your twelfth fret, and then you go up three more to your fifteenth, and there's another single one, then seventeen, nineteen, twenty-one. I mean, it is, and actually this has twenty-two frets, like a Les Paul would, and you all know how much I love Les Pauls, but also like a 335. And so this thing, right from the start, is functional in its art. I love that about this guitar so much. So aesthetically, obviously, you've got this gorgeous abalone inlay all around the outside of the guitar and the outside of the sound holes and everything else. And that is all for aesthetics, but what gorgeous aesthetics it gives it to really make this guitar pop even more than it normally would Already, I cannot believe this gorgeous bubble maple top. And by the way, this guitar is affordable. This is actually very, very affordable. It is not, you know, a several thousand dollar instrument like you would expect for a guitar of this quality with this kind of ornamentation. And not just the ornamentation, but again, what ultimately determines what's important for a guitar is the playability. I've always, always said that. My father, a lifelong professional guitar player, always said that. The aesthetics are nice, but what's most important is that the guitar feels and plays and sounds the way you want it to. And this thing does all of that better than a heck of a lot of guitars that I've played. So I want to show you one more really cool thing on this guitar because you've obviously got the Minerick branded pickups here with their logo on them and all that, and that's cool. You've got these gorgeous tuners, by the way. And by the way, also, these are locking tuners. These are beautiful locking tuners, and there's my serial number that, that was handwritten on with Mark's initials. I've got to say also thank you, Mark, and not just you, Mark, but thank you to your dad and thank you to your wonderful wife 
Seriously, this guy's whole family is in this business, including his dad, who's just such a cool, cool guy. And I love talking to him. I love seeing him every time I get to see him. This is a wonderful family business made up of truly wonderful, amazing, good-hearted people. So if you want to support a small business, this is the guitar to buy, or at least something from their line. But something else I want to show you about this awesome, awesome thing, you can look at this tail down here. And what is that? That's not just a tail. That is what Mark refers to as a tone tail. Now, if you go to Mark's website and check out all of his guitars, you're going to see similar stuff. Not exactly like this, but you'll see similar stuff on pretty much all of Mark's guitars. Not just the semi-hollow bodies like this, but also on the solid body guitars. So on completely solid body guitars, you'll still see things like this extra tone tail. Maybe it's offset, maybe it's in a different spot or something, but you're going to see shapes that don't just look cool, but the shapes are also functional. And that is because Mark swears by this. And I've got to say, I'm not a luthier, but I have no reason to disagree with him because I've heard and felt and seen the product for a long, long time and the effect of what he does. Mark swears that having this extra piece of wood down here adds to the bassiness and the richness, the natural richness of the tone of what you're playing. Now that's without respect to the pickups or anything else because trust me, what ultimately plays the most important part in any guitar are the materials. The actual wood and the design of the guitar, the shape and all that. You can literally take a 2x4 like Les Paul did and plug pickups into it Put pickups on it, design them yourself, wrap them yourself like Les Paul did, and you can play something. And it might look weird and funny, but, you know, and, and, and I love Les for that. Les is my hero. I think anybody who watches my channel or knows anything about me knows that Les is my ultimate hero. But either way, whether Les is my hero or not, there are people who have improved on that design over the years, and one of those people is Mark Minerick, with things like the Tone Tail to add extra tone an extra sound, an extra body. Not, not just physical body, but auditory body to the tone. And trust me, this thing punches. So you want to hear this thing really in full blast now? Here we go. Now I'm going to play this completely clean. No effects. I'm going straight from the guitar right into my matchless chief amp. And I've got the volume <laughs> and everything turned way, way down on the amplifier. And the volume on the guitar, you can see there's one volume knob and two tone knobs. I've got the volume turned pretty much all the way down. This thing is so hot, just look, just by barely even turning it on. And then I don't know if I'm gonna go all the way up with it today because I don't wanna blow the windows out of my studio here. But either way, this thing is super hot as you can hear and as you're about to see. So this is on the neck pickup. This is the rhythm position, the neck pickup. with the tone down away so now I'm gonna turn the tone all the way up and show you how much bite this can have even on the neck pickup listen to that bite doesn't that almost sound kind of like a Telecaster with a little bit more bass and oomph to it which is never a bad thing This is just how much this guitar is breaking up right into the amplifier. So now I'm going to move the toggle switch into the middle position so we have both pickups engaged. <laughs> even more bite but you've still got that clarity listen you've still got that clarity here I'm turning the tone way up again on everything just to give you a, as much bite as possible you've still got that clarity that you would get from a traditional looking <laughs> semi hollow body guitar like an ES335 or something like that so check this out <laughs> this 
See all that bite and all that beautiful tone? Now I'm going to turn the tone back a little bit, both the bass tone and the treble tone back a little bit. And, and you can still play jazz on this. You can play some funk and all that, or if you want to do more of that stuff, you put it back on rhythm and do... And you can turn it way back and you get like more of that like traditional sort of like kind of jazz box sort of a sound like so you can get all that out of this guitar now if you really don't want any of that bite at all to play traditional jazz then just adjust your amp and drop the bass back a little bit but because i like to have a little bit more gain and a little bit more oomph in my playing than like a traditional jazz player would then you can do all those adjustments right on your amplifier and this guitar will do it now going all the way to the bridge pickup just the bridge pickup I've got the tone still rolled way way back and this is how it sounds and you've still got a lot of that like nice bassy boxiness but you've also got a lot of bite now you hear that now I'm gonna turn the tone knobs up about halfway each of them and now listen to the bite if you want to play country you can really knock their socks off with this sucker. Then you can transition right into blues if you want to, back that tone off a little bit. Still a nice amount of bite and gain. And you want to do some blues, some BB King type stuff, you can put this right back under the neck pickup and then I bend down hearted baby ever since the day we met. Remember, BB was known for his single note. Whenever you hear somebody play a single note and just let it ring. That's BB. And you can get that tone right with this guitar. Now I have to say, I really think everybody should own a Minaret guitar. And at least one, maybe five, 10, 20, whatever you want to do. But if you buy one, I'm gonna ask you to do two things. Just because, again, not a, I'm not getting anything out of this, just because Mark is a friend of mine and I would love for him to know that I've helped him to be successful. And also because I want to know that someone actually watches my videos and does this. So if you can do two, two quick things, if you buy one of these, which again, you really, really should. Number one, if you'll tell Mark or whoever you talk to at his company that you, have seen this on my channel, Johnny Stewart, John's Guitar Lounge. That would mean a ton to me. And then secondly, if you can comment on this video or my other Minerick video and let me know about that because I would love to talk with you about it. And we can talk either in the comments or I'll send you my email and we can talk about it offline because there's even more cool stuff with this guitar that I want everybody to know and more cool stuff about Mark and his company that I want people to know that I'd be happy to tell you about offline if you want to do that. Now, I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, please like this video, hit that like button. Every one of you who is already a subscriber, I appreciate it very, very much. Anyone who does not subscribe yet, please subscribe because it really makes YouTube take notice of my channel and push my stuff out to more people. And that's so important to me because I want to teach people how to play the guitar for free, show them all the things that have helped me play guitar easier and learn to play better over the years. And also, I really love showing you all the cool gear that I've been fortunate enough to get over the years. Not because I want to brag and show, hey, look how cool I am. I have all this cool stuff like this beautiful mineral guitar. It's not about that. I want you guys to have it too. And you guys can have incredible quality stuff just like this. And I want to show you that it's out there and show you what it can do because it is so much fun to play and so rewarding to have it. So thank you so much for being here in John's Guitar Lounge. Join me again next time right here in John's Guitar Lounge. Take care.